In the past four years, I've tried nine different kinds of businesses and like side gigs, side hustles. And two of these side hustles actually brought me to quit my job in 2019. So I've been doing my own thing full time for about three and a half years now. If you're thinking of starting a business this year, then keep watching because I'm gonna share the nine things I've tried in the past four years and six other business ideas that my friends are doing and they are making money with it. The hustles that I share in this video are gonna be a combination of passive income streams and also non-passive income streams. So we'll start off with the ones that I've tried first. So the first one I tried was making a physical product and selling it. So the first thing I ever did was when I started my calligraphy business, I sold greeting cards. I do have another more in-depth video about how I did that. So if you're interested in selling greeting cards, you can watch that one, but at the beginning, when I was thinking about starting a side business, selling greeting cards was actually the idea that seemed like the easiest thing for me to start because I just kind of wanted to do something. So I started off with greeting cards. I have some other friends who are selling other kinds of physical products. So some examples are bubble tea holders, crochet products, beauty products, clothing. And for those ones, it's a little bit more difficult to start because you actually have to find like a supplier or like a manufacturer for those things. For me, when I started selling greeting cards, I literally went to a print shop and just like printed greeting cards. So it really depends like the, the kind of physical product you want to sell. If it's like a handmade thing, obviously it's easier to just start because you just do it in your own house. But if your passion is in something else and you need to look for a supplier or a manufacturer, then it is a little bit more difficult to start but but you can totally still do it. In the future, I do think I wanna sell some kind of like a journal. So I'll probably have to find like a manufacturer to make the journals or something like that. The next thing I tried when I was still working in my nine to five job was teaching calligraphy workshops. So if you have a skill and other people are interested in learning it, you can totally host your own workshops. I do have a video about hosting in-person workshops. This one's specifically for calligraphy workshops, but I do think it'll be helpful if you want to host some kind of creative workshop, maybe a photography workshop or a how to plant things workshop. To start off, you can rent a room or just find a cafe that's willing to host you and you don't really need to find like a very formal place to teach. You can basically find your own place. The next side hustle idea is freelancing a skill you know. So that could be photography, video editing, writing articles. For me, I did on-site calligraphy and I also offer wedding calligraphy services. And this is a great way to start a business if you already have a skill that you know and you don't have to go out and learn something. Oh yeah, another thing is like teaching languages. That's another thing. So the next one I tried was actually last year and I only did this for a month, but I tried delivering food with Uber Eats and oh my God, it, it was such an experience. It was really cool to try it out, but I honestly don't like it because I don't like driving and I suck at parking, but there are so many of these gig economy kind of side hustles that you can try like food delivery, taxi services grocery delivery and task rabbit. After I quit my job in 2019, I really wanted to take my calligraphy business from a in-person kind of business to a more online business. And that's when I started business coaching. So I was specifically helping calligraphers with starting a business. So if you've already done something that you know how to do, you can coach other people. You can teach other people how to do the same thing. If you're not really sure if you want to do this or how you can do this, you can start by offering like a couple of people free beta coaching packages. So I did this at the beginning when I was, I had like low self-confidence. I didn't know if I could coach people. I didn't know if my advice would be helpful. So I found three people who wanted to start a calligraphy or an art business and I coached them for free for like a month or two. And then like they actually got results. And then I started offering like pay packages. From there, you can do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can do group coaching. And then the other thing that a lot of coaches like to do, or a lot of people who teach things is once you build an audience, you can package your knowledge into a course. So that's also what I did. And I have a course called the Calligraphy Instructor Academy, which is a course about how to host a calligraphy workshop. It's like very, very niche. If you can get a system running, or if you have like a big enough audience, you could just like make passive income from selling the course. For me, my Calligraphy Instructor Academy course, it's super, super niche and I don't really sell it passively. I wish it sold by itself. I think it's good that I tried. I know how to create a course and I think maybe in the future I'll make another kind of course that isn't super duper niche. Two years ago, I started a YouTube channel and honestly, it has been taking so long to get it off the ground. Like I was 
I made so many videos and it wasn't until last month that one of my videos like got bigger. Um, the whole time I was doing YouTube, I feel like I was just trudging, trudging, trudging along. And the growth has been like really slow and steady. So I would say if you want to make money, YouTube is not the fastest way, but I think if you have that passion to like share things with people and you're willing to put in a lot of time and a lot of energy, and I'm not saying it's gonna take you like two years. It took me like two years to get to a point where I'm like happy, but you just don't know how long it's gonna take you to get monetized and to build an audience. And of course you can do, you don't have to be monetized to make money off YouTube. You can have a YouTube channel and sell your course or sell your other services, your coaching, consulting, but it's really like a labor of love. I think you really need to want to do YouTube in order to be consistent and like sustain this because it is a lot of energy. The next business I started was an Etsy shop and this I have actually been super duper happy about. It's about two and a half months in and I'm making like consistent sales. Check out these videos if you wanna learn more about my Etsy shop. But Etsy shops are a great way, especially if you sell digital downloads, it's more of like a passive income stream. You can definitely start like an Etsy shop and sell physical products, but starting an Etsy store is really great because everything's kind of in one system, like the payment systems and everything. And if you have really good SEO, then you might not even need to do social media promotion. Like people can just find your product through the Etsy search. The other thing I have is a blog and it's on my dinacalligraphy.com website. And that blog is actually not monetized, but you can definitely monetize a blog. There are so many people making a full-time income from blogging. And there are several ways, like you could do affiliates, you can do ads, you can use the blog to promote like a product or service that you offer. Like there's so many ways to monetize a blog. So those are all the things that I have tried myself and I'll give you some other ideas and these are, business ideas that my friends or people I know have actually done and they're successful doing them. So the first one is social media marketing. Actually a lot of friends who do like freelance social media management, like they help companies or brands or just like other business owners manage their social media, like the social media calendar, writing captions or like making posts and also doing like strategy work. Another one is selling books on Amazon. So self-publishing books. I don't know a lot about it, but I think it can be very lucrative if you know what you're doing if, and if you find a really, really good niche for Amazon self-publishing. So the next one is consulting. And I have a couple of friends who are consulting on the thing that they used to do when they were in a job. So. I do know somebody who was working in non, like the nonprofit sector and then um, she quit her job and then now she's doing like nonprofit consulting because she already has that experience and now she just, she's doing her own thing but in the same field. The next thing is offering the service you learned in your formal education. So I have one friend who went to school for um, like, it was like a counseling program or a therapy program and then I have other friends who are accountants and they worked at accounting firms or they worked in like corporate accounting and they are now taking on their own clients on the side. So like helping people do their taxes or bookkeeping and stuff like that. Next one is flipping things, things that you really, really like or you have a lot of knowledge about. So I have friends who do this in like the fashion world and then also friends who are doing it in like the sports cards world. I've never done it myself, but I, I've heard that you can make a lot of money. I don't know. <laughs> the next thing, which is something I wanna do in the future, and hopefully this year, that's one of my goals for this year, is to buy an investment property and like rent it out just like on a monthly basis or do Airbnb. So I have friends who are doing this and honestly, like I just love the whole Airbnb idea. I really wanna like design a place and like I love meeting people as well and like helping travelers. So I think that would be really, really fun. And so honestly, like I, okay, I just gave you like a lot of different ideas and there's definitely so many more ways that you can make money, so many different ways, so many. Like basically anything that you're interested in, there is a way to make money. There are so many things you could do, but when you, when you actually are trying to start up the thing, it actually takes a lot of energy and so much work just to do one thing. So if you are thinking about starting something, I would say, especially if it's like the first business you're starting, start with what is the 
easiest, but then also like you should probably have an interest in it. Like don't do it just for the money or because like you're gonna be doing it for a long time or at least one or two years. And if you're not interested, then you might just like at the end not wanna do it anymore and pivot. That's kind of what happened with me. Um, like I, I love calligraphy, but I knew it wasn't like the full-time thing that I wanted to do. This is actually the full-time thing that I wanna do. It's like content creation and like sharing my journey and, and like the YouTube and making passive income. So the Etsy is really great. But the calligraphy that I was doing and also the business coaching, I just knew that it was gonna be a stepping stone to where I really wanna be. And I wouldn't have been able to start my YouTube if I didn't start my calligraphy side business because with YouTube, like, I just, I just never thought I would be a YouTuber because I didn't have the confidence to be on video and I didn't really like how I looked. But when I started the calligraphy business, I had to do a lot of, I did like a lot of Instagram stories with my face in it. So I guess I got a lot of practice and because I did that so much. And then also when I started the coaching business, I. I like put myself out there so much and, and like all of that helped me build up the confidence to do YouTube. So I personally think you should go after your passions, but I do understand that some of you might need like quick cash um, and that's maybe why you wanna start a side hustle. So if it's for quick cash, I would say gig economy or offering a service that you already know, like video editing or photography or like teaching something, maybe tutoring. So those are the easiest ways if you need cash immediately. When you start any business, yes, the business strategy and picking the right business to start is really important, but it's also super important to have a entrepreneurial mindset. I do have a video about my mindset shifts that I made going from employee to entrepreneur. So check that out if you wanna start a business and be in the right mindset.